Every moment, every break, we thank Allah. The blessings of Ramadan, the blessings of Ramadan, the blessings of Ramadan, the blessings of Ramadan. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen Amma ba'd fa'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim As salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulallah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habiballah As salatu wa salamu alayka ya Nabiyallah وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله. Dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani Channel, I welcome you to another session of Blessings of Ramadan. The beloved Messenger of Allah Azza wa Jal صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم has said, On the Day of Judgment there will be no shade. Other than the Arsh of Allah Azza wa Jal. Three types of people will be under the shade of the Arsh. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked about these people and he replied by saying, The person who removes a difficulty from, uh, from anyone who belongs to my Ummah, the one who revives the Sunnah, the prophetic way. And the third person mentioned who will be under the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the one who recites peace and blessings upon me, durud upon me in abundance. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel, previously we mentioned uh, some points which invalidate the Etikaf and uh, today inshallah Zawajal, I would like to begin with uh, mention of some points which allow an individual to to break the Etikaf without incurring a sin so in these situations uh, one is allowed to end the Etikaf and uh, he would have to make up for it uh, inshallah we'll mention that method too but um, breaking the etikaf or ending the etikaf in these situations would not incur a sin. Firstly, if during the etikaf an individual suffers from an illness which cannot be treated within the masjid, he is forced to leave the masjid due to his condition, then this will be it will be permissible for him to leave. Um, obviously, on leaving the etikaf will end. He would have to make up for it, but it will it would not be sinful. Another point, another situation: if someone is drowning or, or burning in a fire, um, and the mu'takif he goes to the rescue and he leaves the boundaries or the defined boundary of the masjid, this would obviously end his etikaf, but uh, it would not incur a sin, and he would have to make it make up for it. If uh, the people are called for for jihad and it became fard, fard ayn. This is a situation also described by the fuqaha. If a funeral arrives um, and there is no one to offer to lead the funeral salah and um, he, he must uh, leave the masjid for the funeral salah then he could uh, he has permission to do so but this would end his etikaf and he would have to make up for it. If the mu'takif is uh, taken out of the masjid with force uh, due to uh, any reason, some individuals come or some people come to take him away and he's forced out of the masjid. Um, it, it might even be, in some situations, I guess, uh, police might come or um, the government or anyone, any officers come and for any reason he needs to be questioned or he is uh, forced out of the masjid in any, um, in any situation 
and it's not possible for him to uh, to enter to come back instantly this would um, end his etikaf but again it would not be sinful because uh, it was not his own doing it was forced upon him the mu'tikif can also and his etikaf to offer the funeral salah of uh, a close relative, a mahram woman or his wife. But again, uh, it would obviously, it would be wajib for him to make up for this, uh, for ending his etikaf in this way. And if the mu'tikif is a witness in a case and the decision is uh, depends on his statement, without him, uh, the de a decision uh, may not be made or his statement is uh, is key in the case then uh, he has permission to end his etikaf in order to testify and um, obviously prevent the rights of an individual being violated but uh, he would have to make up for his etikaf Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad Dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel The scholars of hadith have mentioned a very touching account Which took place uh, soon after the apparent demise of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam It involves the famous companion of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam Sayyiduna Abdullah Ibn Abbas Radiyallahu Ta'ala Anhuma now, He was performing etikaf in a Masjid Nabawi Sharif ala sahibiha salatu was salam and during his etikaf he saw a man who looked very sad full of sorrow so on inquiring, asking the man about his uh, his state and why he was sad, the man replied by saying, "O oh, son of the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam, I have to fulfill the right of an individual. I have to fulfill someone's right." And then, in a very emotional way, he pointed towards this man he pointed towards the resting place of our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said by the honor of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who is resting here i do not have the the ability to fulfill his right to fulfill this right when sayyiduna abdullah ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma he saw uh, his, he saw how this man expressed his concern. He, he said to him, do you want me to put in a good word? Do you want me to intercede for you? And this man said that uh, if you can. Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma left the boundaries of the masjid. This man was very surprised by this and he said to him, you know, have you forgotten about your etikaf? Have you forgotten that you uh, that you were performing the etikaf? And Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma he replied by saying, No, I have not forgotten my etikaf. Then he he pointed towards the resting place, the beloved uh, the blessed Rawda of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam and he said that it has not been long or too long that I heard from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam and when he mentioned uh, the beloved messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam he became emotional and he began to cry tears were flowing from his eyes and this was the effect of he was feeling um, he was missing the company and um, the, the vision of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam and the way the ulama describe the Sahaba Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhum um, and, and their state after the apparent demise of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam it's very touching 
the likes of Sayyiduna Bilal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and other companions. So when he mentioned the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he began to, tears were flowing. And then he said that not, lo not long ago I heard with my very own, very own ears that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa wasallam said, and fulfilling the need of your brother is better than 10 years of etikaf. And whoever does etikaf for a single day, for the pleasure of Allah Almighty, Allah places between him and hell, Allah places three, di three trenches. And the distance covered by each trench is greater than more than the distance between the east and the west. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad Subhanallah azawajal This is the benefit of just performing etikaf for one day As Sayyiduna ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhum revealed that the Prophet he, he heard from the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that a day just a day, etikaf for a single day for the sake of Allah Almighty and the reward, Allah places three such trenches which cover a distance greater than the, than the distance between the east and west between him and the fire of hell. Three such trenches, an expression of how, uh, how one is blessed when he performs the etikaf. So if this is the benefit for a single day, we can't we can't begin to imagine uh, how how many blessings and how much reward and how much benefit we would gain from the reward of etikaf for a 10 year period so from this narration we also learn the significance of fulfilling the need of another muslim and helping other believers in various narrations, we are encouraged to make life easier for our Muslim brothers, to, to be a means of help for them, to serve them in some way. And in one particular hadith uh, narration, it is mentioned that after the obligatory actions, the most important action or the most beloved action to Allah Almighty is to make another believer happy to put to bring happiness uh, to create happiness in his heart unfortunately we live in in a day and age where uh, brothers are fighting each other they quarrel over trivial issues they they fight over inheritance wealth um, unfortunately uh, a lot of the time the disagreement is created by a phase of backbiting and a phase of telltaling, telltale, uh, telltales and uh, a phase of people uh, simply adding fuel to the fire. And uh, unfortunately, some people thrive on creating fitna and uh, causing such familial feuds. May Allah Almighty save us, save us all from such people and such uh, familial disagreements. If every believer accepted this as a responsibility and understood the significance of um, making life easier for each other and helping each other and uh, putting, uh, creating happiness for each other, then this world would be a better place. In fact, we would change the world. May Allah enable us all to strive to keep peace with each other, to treat our Muslim brothers with love and respect, always consider uh, their self-dignity and always consider uh, their reputation and do everything in our power to preserve their reputation and, and think good of them, speak, uh, speak well of them and uh, try to conceal the faults of others and remember our faults to keep us focused. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel, if for any reason a mutakif is uh, unable to complete his uh, sunnah itikaf in the last 10 days of the blessed month of Ramadan, 
and uh, it, this obviously incurs uh, the qada for the etikaf and the first thought that comes to mind when you think of making up for an etikaf which was not complete or an etikaf which was ended uh, d during the actual 10 day period thought that comes to mind is that um, does this mean that we have to perform the etikaf all over again uh, meaning from 1 to 10 or the whole 10 day period do we have to cover that again or must we wait for Ramadan to come again um, it sh is the qada only done in Ramadan? So all just to answer these thoughts which uh, come to mind, these questions which come to mind. I would, uh, inshallah, I will mention a few things. First and foremost, the qada of the etikaf, uh, which was not complete, which was ended, is only for a single day. And this single day is obviously would be spent in the same way. Um, the single day is a single day of etikaf. And the condition for this etikaf is that uh, the individual is fasting. As is the case for the normal etikaf. This etikaf, this one day uh, qada, can take place within Ramadan if, uh, if there are days remaining or even after Ramadan but he must uh, the individual must be fasting as far as after uh, Ramadan is concerned he must ensure that obviously it's not the day of Eid or the defined days of Dhul Hijjah from the 10th to the 13th for uh, fasting on these days is makru uh, tahrimi so if uh, for example the etikaf was ended for any reason um, by the 22nd or 23rd day then if the individual was to come into the masjid on the 24th or 25th day before uh, sunset a few minutes before sunset to be uh, safe and he makes the intention of making up for the uh, etikaf the qada of uh, etikaf he makes this intention and he spends uh, the whole day the whole next day um, in etikaf his qada uh, will be complete that will be insufficient for him and he would have made up for his etikaf and if it's not done in ramadan for example he's for whatever reason uh, maybe he, he did not complete his etikaf or uh, towards the very last few days the etikaf was ended or uh, for any other reason he could not make up for the etikaf during Ramadan then then after Ramadan apart from the days which were mentioned um, he could he can come to the masjid at the same the defined time before sun, sunset and spend a day in etikaf with the intention of making up uh, for the etikaf that was not ended and uh, this qada would, would be uh, sufficient now if the qada is not done for whatever reason and that individual uh, dies he um, after his death his inheritors um, he should as a will tell um, those of his, those inheritors who he has left behind to uh, give a fidya um, for the etikaf that he was not able to make up for now if uh, they decide to do so or with their permission it is done um, obviously he can't perform the etikaf now that he's left this world so the fidya of the etikaf would simply be one sataqa fitr um, if he was to uh, give this to this amount or the money to an, any individual who is entitled to take zakat then the fidya of that etikaf uh, this will this would be the fidya of the etikaf and it would make up for the etikaf not being uh, the qada not being done as far as um, the etikaf breaking the etikaf is concerned or ending it is concerned as mentioned before if one due to some due to a valid reason uh, some of the reasons that were mentioned uh, that allow one to end the etikaf as far as uh, situations where it's permissible, um, it does incur 
the qada, but there is no sin. However, if an individual does not have a valid reason for ending the etikaf and uh, ends the etikaf without any such reason, this is this is obviously a sin, and he must repent for this sinful action. And just as a reminder. Uh, Repentance is not just about uh, striking both sides of the face and astaghfirullah and tawbah, saying tawbah with the tongue. Repent means to express hatred for that sin. It means to turn away from that sin. One must make this, uh, express this promise in the court of Allah Almighty that he will not he will not perform this sinful action again and within his heart he must reject uh, this sin tawbah is about is about returning to the obedience of allah almighty and expression of this is through remorse so um, if one is guilty of this and if uh, one as uh, uh, generally speaking whether it's etika or any other sin one must repent sincerely and uh, the, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam has mentioned uh, the signs of a sincere repentance. Nowadays, we see a lot. Uh, we see a lot of this false pretense kind of rep uh, repentance, where people do things that are wrong, and uh, they intentionally, at times, disobey Allah Almighty, and they know exactly what they're doing. They're in the right frame of mind, but. Uh, after performing that sinful action, it's simply a case of astaghfirullah. Uh, some hand gesture and and they think that's enough well that is not enough and such a repentance is not accepted in the court of Allah Almighty may Allah enable us to repent sincerely sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad dear islamic brothers and viewers of madani channel alhamdulillah the fasting in ramadan is a reminder for us of all those people who go through on a daily basis or it's an ongoing condition for them they face hunger um, and thirst or even both and the beauty of fasting is such that it's a internal action it's a concealed action as far as the effect of fasting is concerned um, I would like to share with you an account of how the shaitan is affected by the fasting individual and how fasting is like a shield for the believer a shield of protection from the effects of shaitan or even a shield of protection for other believers who are um, who are near such a believer who is fasting it is uh, narrated about a pious individual that he saw uh, shaitan near the door of a masjid and was obviously very surprised to see this shaitan was unable to to enter the masjid and when he was asked about uh, why he could not enter he pointed out that there is he pointed out his purpose he revealed that he wanted to enter the masjid to reach a worshipper and whisper and distract that worshipper uh, through his whispers but between him and that worshipper there is another individual there is another believer who is lying down uh, and he is a person who is fasting and due to his fasting condition each time he breathes or whenever he is breathing it's like a flame shaitan revealed it's like fire for him and he and this is stopping him from getting to that believer so we learn from this that the fasting the action of fasting itself it's not only a means of protection for the individual who is fasting it can also uh, be a means of protection for others um, who are present or who are near as we see um, as 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 is made clear uh, as we see clearly in this uh, particular narration as far as the month of Ramadan is concerned um, we are fasting in Ramadan and we are getting the benefits of this fasting in Ramadan but even after Ramadan uh, generally speaking uh, when we uh, may fast on a voluntary fast 
then let us be encouraged by this, that this fasting condition is something which drives away uh, shaitan and uh, protects us and others from, uh, his, uh, from his mischief and from his whispers. Once a companion of the Prophet ﷺ entered the prophetic court and he revealed with great remorse and um, in, in, in almost uh, uh, panic, uh, a state of being um, worried and concerned, he revealed to the Prophet ﷺ, he said that I have intentionally had, in, I, I, in a state of fasting, intentionally had intercourse with my wife and what should I do now? The Prophet ﷺ told him to free a slave. This uh, the Sahabi said that I do not have, I cannot do this. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam asked him, "Can you uh, fast consecutively for sixty days?" And this man uh, for two months, and he said, "I cannot." Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam said, "Can you feed sixty masakin?" And he said, uh, "Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa I cannot do this." While um, this was happening, someone, uh, uh, some dates were presented to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam gave these dates to him and said, "Go give these dates away um, to make up for uh, for the action, to make up for to fulfill the kafara, the expiation." He said. Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam there is no one in the whole of Medina al munawwara who is more needy than I am and when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa he uh, heard this response he smiled and uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa uh, began to smile so much the narration says that his blessed uh, teeth began to shine and he said he simply said to him go and feed your family. In other words, go feed your family with these dates and your kafara, your expiation is done. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel, from the narration we learnt the unique status of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, how he was able to advise this companion of his and uh, the different types of expiation which he was not able to fulfill. Um, in the end, it, it ended with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam simply telling him to feed his family and his expiation, his kafara would be fulfilled. We learn from this that as far as the Sharia is concerned. The Sharia is what is defined by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam. The decisions that he makes, the law that he uh, explains and declares, is what the Sharia is. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam, as he sees fit, he uh, would advise uh, his companions radiyallahu taala anhum. The etikaf, as, as we have mentioned before in our session, sessions of blessings of Ramadan, um, this phase of etikaf has changed the lives of many people. And uh, following the format of our session, I would like to end with an account of a brother um, who, who was able to gain blessings through... Um, performing the etikaf of the final 10 days uh, of Ramadan with the brothers of Dawat Islami. This brother was from uh, Saeedabad, uh, Baldia town in Babul Madina, Karachi. And he revealed that he learned how to read the Quran in Madrasatul Madina, but he wasn't, he, he was unable to maintain uh, punctuality as far as his prayer was concerned there was still some laziness in terms of his uh, in practice in terms of practicing islam 
But then uh, he performed the etikaf for the final 10 days of Ramadan with the brothers of, with the brothers of Dawat Islami. And he was inspired by what he saw and he was encouraged by what he saw. Um, his heart changed. Um, he developed this, uh, this new passion and he intended to, he made the intention of traveling in the way of Allah um, in the form of a Madani Qafila after the etikaf. And he revealed how he was looking for work and uh, he was unemployed. But he went on this Madani Qafila and he delivered a speech, a bayan on this Madani Qafila and he performed uh, a supplication. And the people uh, the, who were responsible in that particular masjid, they were so impressed uh, by what they saw, uh, by his bayan and, his, and the manner in which he uh, he performed a supplication that they they actually gave him the job as a khatib they uh, they decided to employ him and in this way the brother expresses his gratitude uh, that alhamdulillah through dawat islami and the blessings of etikaf and the blessings of the, that change in his life he was able to he was blessed with um, this beautiful uh, source of income May Allah Almighty enable us to learn from the experiences of people and bring about changes in our life. May Allah Almighty enable us all to remain affiliated with the environment of Dawati Islami. And wherever you are around the world, try to take part in the activities uh, run by Dawati Islami, the brothers of Dawati Islami. Um, if, you're, if you're unable to, to actively take part in, in any event, then at least um, maintain this link and connection with Dawat Islam through the Madani through Madani channel itself. May Allah enable us to follow the way of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam. Amin. Bijahi Nabil. Amin. Sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam. Every moment, every break, we thank Allah. The blessings of Ramadan. The blessings of Ramadan. The blessings of Ramadan, the blessings of Ramadan.